Hey, what's up, folks? GK here. So when I was going over the Professional Cloud DevOps Engineer Course Study Guide in the Google Cloud, so I found this first section which talks about applying SRE principles to the service. Now you must have this question like, you know, why do they have SRE in DevOps? And what are those principles? And what is this SLI, SLO or SLA? And whenever you go through sample questions of this exam, you would come across these terms. And curiously also, you know, when you are transitioning from DevOps to SRE or when you're applying for a SRE job, you must know these terms and these are very important terms. So by the end of this video, I will cover some of these key concepts so that it will get you started in the first section if you're preparing for this exam. But also in general, if you're not preparing, you just want to understand about the key SRE terms and, you know, what are the principles and stuff. That would be helpful. Um, and I'm trying to cover as much as I can in the few slides. So again, coming back to the same question. So how DevOps is different from SRE? So Google has made it very clear in most of those articles and those videos. I'm going to paste those links in the description that SRE is a prescriptive way of implementing your DevOps philosophy. Now, as you all know, you must have heard this DevOps term more often in the market, like DevOps is a, uh, is a cultural thing, is a cultural transformation that happens in a company to break the silos. And there are some DevOps principles or pillars that companies would go through to measure them and stuff. Now, SRE is going to make it very prescriptive to implement those uh, DevOps philosophies. So you can say that those two are close friends uh, to achieve the same goals, whatever DevOps goals, you know, SRE is going to achieve the same thing pretty much. And it's going to do it in a manner that's going to be very easy for companies to apply uh, when compared to DevOps. So for example, if, if you join a company, the way companies implement DevOps from one company and other company is completely different sometimes. And since it's open-ended, they have their own philosophies and stuff. But anyways, let's not talk about that, but let's go over some of the key DevOps principles or the pillars. And then I will explain you how SRE is solving those or, or how SRE is approaching those uh, pillars and helping you to solve that in, in your company. So the first one is reduce silos. So as you all know, the DevOps main principle or the main pillar of DevOps and the one that you would seriously want to measure is how you're reducing the silos between your QA, uh, your dev and your operations. You know, the wall of confusion or whatever you want to call it. So that's the main pillar. So how SRE does it is it preaches that both these teams like dev and operations or SRE engineers, they use some common tools and techniques across the stack. Uh, for example, if there is a issue in the production and if developers are using some system or if uh, operations are using another system, I mean, if they are using two different systems, it's tough for op dev uh, developers to engage and get that confidence about the system. So, so what SRE preaches is that everyone have to have the same working view uh, with respect to the production environment, especially. Now you can have many tools like, you know, you can have a stack driver tool in Google Cloud uh, that talks about, that helps you to set those like SLOs and SLIs and stuff, but your developers are going to have the same access to that tool and then they're going to know what's happening in the production. So that's one thing that SRE preaches to reduce the silos is to have same tools and techniques across the stack. So that's the one thing to remember. Now the second thing is accept failures as normal. Now, as you all know, in DevOps as well, you know, it's imperative that companies do changes very frequently. And one of the main thing is when you do changes more frequently, uh, you have to accept the failures and failures are normal. And now how SRE would help you to do that? The first thing is SRE preaches on the postmortems, failures, and the same failure should not happen more than once for example there is a bug in the production that happened today so tomorrow the same bug has happened sre preaches that the same exact issue should not happen more than once so exact same issue so that's important metric to you know to uh, measure and the other important keyword in sre is called error budget and what that means is that is set to quantify the accidents and the risks. 
Now, for example, if a service receives 1 million requests, right? Uh, and the SL of the service is 99.9%. .9%. In this case, the error budget would be 1000 errors, which means that let's say if there are more than 1000 errors, so your product team has crossed the error budget. Now your product team cannot go for any other releases till they fix the error budget or they have to go to an escalation path uh, to, to come back and deploy the changes because even though the developers would like to deploy the changes because they have crossed the SLO which is 99.9% .9 and 1000 errors so the SLO is the main objective I'm going to discuss about the SLO in the next slide but the error budget is something it's a measurable budget that you set for your product team it's an engage, it's an agreement between your product team your executives and your SRE team members that a application a development team cannot cross the error budget so if, if they cross that you know agreement then they're gonna go for uh, next releases so that that's the measurable parameter uh, which is called error budget that you know SRE preaches so the other thing in DevOps is the other pillar is implement gradual change so for this what SRE does is it encourages to do canary based deployments so if you're not aware of the word canary based deployments it means like you deploy a change and you put that change to small uh, to, to a smaller amount of traffic like you know you deploy that change for two percent or one percent of the traffic just to make sure that you know it's it's all good and there are no issues with that and then you ramp up and then you deploy to to wider audience or more people so google preaches canary based deployments and that's what uh, they follow now leverage tooling and automation again in devops you have a lot of tools you have uh, git you have ansible you have jenkins you name it you have many number of tools for uh, automating your tasks your manual tasks and sre is also preaching the same thing like you eliminate manual work by automating as much as you can so in sre terms the word they use here is called toil so any task that you do manually let's say you are scaling an instance today because of the traffic and you scale an instance again tomorrow and you do that again whenever there is an issue so you're doing that more frequently in a month or in a year so that's toil so instead of that what you can do is you can automate that you can automate the scalability or or you can put your instances in auto scaling mode and you reduce the toil so that's what SRE preaches and that's what they call it as a toil and which is an important uh, keyword to mark here and they also measure the toil and they want your engineers to automate those tasks so measure everything this is again the devops principles you know in devops you measure your quality mttrs and velocity and stuff so in, in sre as well so you measure the toil you measure the availability and you measure the uptime of your service so that's with respect to devops versus uh, sre it's not like versus sre it's like they both go uh, hand in hand to achieve a common goal for the company like basically if you call it as a stability of the product or stability of the service and you know you uh, keep your customers happy you do frequent changes now speaking of stability this is a very good number i think everyone should have it in their mind and you know I will, i'm going to share the link in the description as well for this so most of you know like you know you have an agreement which is called SLA I'm going to discuss about SLA as well but let's say you have created an application or a website and you're going to tell your customers and everybody that my application is going to be available 99.9% .9 which is this one even if you have said that you can still get 43 minutes 43 point two to be precise minutes of downtime for your application so then more nines you know obviously the more available your application is going to be and if uh, if you are saying that your application would be or your service or your website would be 99 percent uh, available uh, which means like you can have a scheduled downtime of 7.2 hours every month if your customers are okay with that so basically that's in the allowed unavailability window 
you can get with each availability level now speaking of availability so how companies measure those availability right because end of the day you want to have your service to be highly available but how you going to measure that is very well defined in sre the first and most important objective is slo which is service level objective so this is where your product team like in google they have product teams you know like g suite or gmail ya youtube they're all individual products right so they have a product team so their product team and sre team they come up with the service level objective for that product so the availability of the product is defined by the slo so it's a precise numeric target for everybody in that company to uh, to be aware of for that product and whenever developers develop a uh, change or make a change they should make sure that you know it's not impacting their slo their overall slo for that uh, for that product or the for the or for that service now a product might have multiple services so you can also apply slo for individual service as well so in an example where google mentioned they mentioned it as it has a shakespeare service uh, but you can you can think of any service so the important thing to hear uh, to understand here is more reliable more cost this is a very interesting thing that uh, sorry says is that you don't want to make it highly available and unless it is required or asked by the customer for example a flipkart service or something you know that that has an api that gives you the list of books and if flipkart says that that service service is available for 99% as you can see in the matrix of the table you can see like there is certain amount of downtime now what ha- happens in the companies usually is that you know people who are not aware of the sri principles they would say that my service is available 99.9% so they are setting a very wrong expectation uh, if they don't want to make their service available 99.9% so if you if you want to have a scheduled downtime it's okay to start at the lowest like 99% and then ramp up slowly based on your confidence and your team's confidence and how you want to deal with your uh, internal team and then how you want to communicate to the customer so then you would increase it more because if you add any percent any nine to that after a decimal you have to make sure the system is that available meaning you have to increase the servers you have to have your support team monitoring it 24/7 you have to have your monitoring servers uh, you know checking all those things you know you have to automate a lot of stuff but also you have to make sure that your dependent servers dependent services you now for for example if flipkart is relying on a data center and if it gives 99.9% that should also cover the data center you know it cannot say that my data center was down and i am not going to give you the data to you so that's important so the bottom line is don't make it overly reliable if you don't intend to commit to it so overly reliable is a very bad idea now the planned downtimes are good or bad so i'll pause the video here you can comment and tell me if the planned downtimes are bad or good according to you but again the interesting concept is that the planned downtimes are good even google does their downtimes they take the system down and they try to see if there are any issues with the system so basically the reason why they do it is so it gives them opportunity to find any issues with the system but also how it's reacting to different uh, customers and stuff so it gives them time to analyze the system and you know make it even more further uh, better for the future customers so that's that's an important thing to note here so slo is a goal that you want to step you want to have it for your team so sla is a promise that you would give to your customers now sla is generally signed by your sales team whenever they are you know selling their product to the customers now let's say if you go to google cloud and search for sla of compute engine you would know that google gives you a very good document about sla how much they guarantee their compute engine service to be up now of course there will be terms and conditions like you know if you put a crappy software and if you uh, you know uh, 
make your instance down it's not google's problem obviously so they will write all those terms and conditions but they will make sure that their data center where uh, your application is actually hosted on so it's going to have an sla and if google doesn't guarantee that they're going to pay you some money or they're going to pay you some money in the form of credits to your google account so this is a common practice by the cloud service providers like you know um aws as well does that or uh, alibaba or any cloud uh, basically they do that because that 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 means that they are giving you guarantee and they're uh, they're agreeing you're signing an agreement with them that you know your their service is going to be sla for this amount of uh, this percentage so sla is a loser's objective than slo which means that if slo is set for 99.95% generally sla would be 99.9% it is just to make sure that you know uh, you you commit to a customer but you make sure that inside your company you have a more sla so that even if something goes wrong you can you can cover that uh, in the form of sla so your slo is always or most of the times is greater than sla or at least it's equal to sla so that's the uh, that's the difference here so if i were to give you an example even before this whole sre got existed uh, when i was working in a in a mid telecom based company so their main application is the prepaid cards uh, in india and so they have an agreement i'm not sure about the monetary part of things because i was a junior developer at that time uh, understanding those things was much above my payroll but the main thing was that at least i was communicated when i was a dba that we cannot have more downtime than 4 hours or something or 8 hours or something you know i don't remember even exact like is it per 6 months or 1 year but that was a contractual agreement i i'm not sure what would have happened if we would not have uh, done that because i'm 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 aware of the fact that at that time you know our databases used to go down we were told not to cross this number but that's that's an sla where you are you are uh, communicating it very clearly through your sales to the customer now other important indicator is sli which is a service level indicator uh, that's the full form of it and here it says to internally to your team how are we doing it so how do we do is the main motto of sli now for example if you take a service and these three here are very important to understand because a service can be so in general when i'm saying service it's it could be a rest api service or it is a service that you are exposing to your customer right so that service how you going to measure that service is you going to check the service request latency and throughput of request by second if it's a batch processing and failures per request so over the period of time when you are measuring all these three important parameters through your monitoring system or anything right so this will give you the overall availability of service uh, for your you know for your slo so this will give this will tell you whether you are pretty much closer to your slo you are uh, you know or you are in the danger of losing uh, breaking that slo so the sla is a key indicator of measuring your actual services through different parameters and these are the three important parameters you know if you want to take a note you can take a note of these because uh when i was practicing some of the questions for devops and i've looked at these parameters and they were asking these so that's all for this video so i went through a lot of sre uh videos and uh, sre links i'm going to paste those in the description but it's a very interesting concept and very good concept and if you are an operations engineer or a devops engineer I think something you should be learning this uh, for your future and this is going to be very helpful whenever you whenever you're going for interviews. So I hope you got something out of this video. I'm going to maybe come up with more SRE videos in future. Uh, but if you have any questions or any confusion on this, please leave it in the comment section and give it a like and share it with your friends. Thank you so much for watching.